Now to decision 2022. In just five days, voters across Idaho will head to the polls to decide who they want to represent them in key federal, state, and local offices. The midterm general election is Tuesday, November 8th. Polling locations will be open from 8 o'clock in the morning until 8 o'clock at night. Of course, a lot of people have already voted in person at early voting locations or by filling out absentee ballots. Early voting closes tomorrow. Also, anyone who still has their absentee ballot needs to turn that into your county clerk's office by 8 o'clock election night. It's too late to mail them now. Idaho is a very red state. Republicans dominate the voter rolls, but there is a large number of unaffiliated voters followed by registered Democrats. According to the Secretary of State's office, as of October 4th, there were just under 1 million registered voters in Idaho. Of those, 577,000 are Republicans, nearly 130,000 are Democrats, 277,000 are unaffiliated, 11,000 are Libertarian, and about 4,000 are members of the Con Constitution Party. The Secretary of State's office says since these numbers posted on October 4th, the number of registered voters in Idaho has grown now to more than a million. And consider the whole population here is just 1.8 million. This Sunday on Viewpoint, we're previewing the 2022 general election. My guests and I break down the major statewide races, including the race for U.S. Senate, Lieutenant Governor, Attorney General, and Superintendent of Public Instruction. Melissa Davlin of Idaho Public Television and KTVB Chief Political Reporter Joe Paris also weigh in on how the race for governor among Governor Brad Little, Democrat Stephen Height, and Independent Ammon Bundy is shaping up. So in terms of the attention on the race, it seems like it's not the most important race in terms of people talking visibility. about it. Yeah, yeah, visibility, which is strange, you know, for every four years, the big one, the governor's race. So it, it seems like the race to me is taking a back seat and hasn't dominated conversation, which is really interesting thinking back to four years ago where we thought, okay, this is going to set up the direction of the state. I think the real conversation that I'm hearing is speculation on how much of the vote Ammon Bundy is going to take from that traditional Republican voter core. Uh, I, I know that a lot of people who supported Janice McGeehan and also Ed Humphreys in the primary mm -hmm. are going to support Ammon Bundy. We, we've seen a strong fundraising game, especially for an independent candidate. You know, more than $600,000 the last time I checked. And of course, those reports will get updated. Money is still coming in. Brad Little's at more than $2 million. You know, he, ha he has the financial advantage. He has the name recognition. He, he has the support of so many lawmakers in the PACs. But Ammon Bundy the percentage of vote that he's going to get, I think, will surprise people. I think he has more support than people realize. This Sunday morning on Viewpoint, we're also focusing on the changing face or faces of the state legislature. Redistricting based on the 2020 census moved legislative district boundaries to square up with the growing and changing population. That, along with some retirements, is leading to a rather sizable turnover in both chambers. Viewpoint airs Sunday morning at 9 on KTVB. Looking forward to it.